This is Dr. Steve Cheney, and today I'd like to talk about the truth about soy. You know, there's a lot of misinformation in the nutrition realm, so my message to you is to question what you've been told. Or put another way, sometimes you need to rethink what you believe based on what you've been told. You see, there are a lot of urban myths out there. And they often start with a blog or a website, but we have to remember that the authors of these blogs and websites are often not trained scientists. So the message is often based on the bias of the authors. Uh, and because they're not trained, they'll confuse animal studies with human clinical studies. Or if there are clinical studies out there, they'll sometimes choose only those clinical studies that selectively support their bias. And you know, the, the message is always spectacular. Basically, many of these blog and website authors never let the facts get in the way of a good story. And you know, some of those websites are authored by doctors, so they sound like they should be very significant. But doctors have their biases too. And if you're reading this blog on a daily basis, and the headlines are always about miracle foods or nutrients that's going to prevent X, whatever disease X is, or about foods and supplements that might just kill you, and they also say that the establishment isn't telling you about it, you know that all of those posts, all of those statements can't be true. And then, you know, doctors and health organizations have their biases as well. If their bias happens to be anti-supplement, the burden of proof is often applied unequally. A single study showing benefit is often ignored. And, and don't get me wrong, if there's only one single study showing a benefit, you know, I don't believe that that makes the case that that supplement is, is, a, is of tremendous value for human health. But they'll ignore those. But if there's just one single study suggesting there might be harm, that'll be emphasized. So, then, you know, that's a bias in the way the burden of proof is applied. And then there's the media, because the media has their biases too. And, you know, these are journalists. They're not trained in how to interpret scientific studies. And of course, it is the spectacular, the bad news that sells subscriptions. And once the story has been repeated often enough, it becomes generally accepted as true. It becomes an urban myth. You know, it's kind of curious. Sometimes I'll go to blogs to investigate what they're saying, and they'll list a source. And I'll click on the source, and guess what? It's another blog. And I click on their source, and guess what? It's another website. Um, you know, these things get propagated over and over again, and once you see them so many times, you think, well, this has just got to be true. Well, let's look at that. Let's look at the urban myths around soy, for example. I'm going to start with soy and breath, breast cancer, because that's the most prevalent. You know, the, you've seen the claim that soy consumption is going to increase the risk of breast cancer in women. And if, and if, you, if women, certainly if a woman has had breast cancer, many experts are saying, well, you should avoid soy. Well, what's the truth? Those fears are based on animal studies, and those animal studies are mixed. There were some animal studies that suggested that soy might increase the risk of breast cancer, and there are other animal studies that suggest that it does not. So what do the human clinical studies show? Well, there's, there's one study that shows that soy consumption over a lifetime decreases the risk of breast cancer by 25 to 58 percent. And another, you know, the, the other real question, but what about women who have had breast cancer? Is it okay for them to consume soy? So again, there was a recent study that looked at 5,000 subjects who had had breast cancer and asked that very question. And what they found in that study is that breast cancer survivors with the highest soy intake had 25% less chance of breast cancer recurrence and 25 less chance of 25% less chance of dying from breast cancer. In fact, there is not a single published clinical study suggesting that soy increases the risk of breast cancer. Now, what about soy and male sexuality? You know, that's another one that's rampant on these blogs and websites. So you have a lot of men running the other direction because, you know, it's going to make them impotent or whatever. Well, so, you know, the claim is that soy consumption is going to decrease male fertility. You know, my, my quick response to that is somebody obviously forgot to tell the Chinese about that. But let's look at that objectively from a scientific point of view. Where do those fears come from? Well, those fears come from the fact that the isoflavones that we find in soy are structurally similar to estrogen. So they're called phytoestrogens. 
But the interesting thing is, if you're a chemist, you realize that testosterone and estrogen are structurally similar. They're derived from the same precursor in the body. So soy isoflavones also resemble testosterone and they represent testosterone as much as they represent estrogen. So soy isn't going to feminize you. It's just as much a testosterone analog as it is an estrogen analog. But again, let's look at the clinical studies. What do they say? Well, there are a couple of recent clinical studies which are what we call meta-analyses, and that means they looked at, they combined the effects of many clinical studies in, in surveying the literature. So the first paper was based on 15 studies, and what that paper showed, if you look at those 15 studies, the, the soy and soy isoflavones have no effect on total and free testosterone levels, they have no effect on testosterone binding protein, and that's a protein that stabilizes testosterone levels and protects testosterone levels in the bloodstream. And they also have no effect on something called free androgen index. And that's just simply a measure of all the male hormones, the hormones that make, make us what we are, guys. And so that's, you know, so in that context, there's no effect on male uh, sexuality. But then there's a second study more recently published based on nine clinical studies, again, showing that total and free testosterone levels were not affected by soy and soy isoflavones, and also that soy and soy, soy isoflavone consumption had no effect on sperm count or sperm motility. And you know, there's some guys that would claim that's the bottom line. Again, you're not gonna find a single published clinical study that actually suggests that soy has a negative impact on male sexuality or any measure of male sexuality. And then there's the myth of soy and pro prostate cancer. And again, the claim is that soy consumption might increase the risk of prostate cancer. So what do the clinical studies actually show? Well, there's one clinical study that shows that soy consumption is associated with decreased prostate cancer risk. There was another uh, a clinical study that looked at prostate cancer survivors. And typically, in prostate cancer survivors, if PSA levels start to increase, that that's a poor prognosis. It means that the cancer has probably recurred. And what they found was that soy consumption was associated with decreased PSA levels. All the control group uh, the PSA levels were rising in the, in the group, consuming, group consuming soy, the PSA levels were falling. And there's a third study that says that soy consumption has no effect on prostate cancer risk. But again, there's not a single published clinical study out there that suggests that soy consumption actually increases prostate cancer risk. And then there's thyroid hormones, because the claim is that soy consumption causes hypothyroidism. And again, sometimes these urban myths are based on a kernel of truth. And in this case, the kernel of truth is that soy and many other foods interfere with the absorption of th thyroid hormone medication. In fact, if you take thyroid hormone medication, your doctor has probably advised you to wait at least an hour, sometimes three or four hours, before you eat anything. Um, I'm glad I don't have to take thyroid medication. But if you look at the bottom line, if you ask, and here's an, again another meta-analysis that looked at 14 published clinical studies, and show that soy protein consumption has no significant effect on blood levels of thyroid hormones. So again, there's no clinical evidence that soy consumption actually causes hypothyroidism in people with normal functioning thyroid glands. The only thing you have to be careful of is if you're taking thyroid medication, you don't want to consume soy at the same time. And then there's the, the thing that's come up recently with the claims about soy and inflammation. And again, the claim is that soy consumption causes inflammation. Now, where's that kernel of truth? Here, the kernel of truth is that soy can increase inflammation in people who are allergic to soy. And you know, the same is true of any food allergy. If you're allergic to dairy and you drink dairy, that's going to cause inflammation. If you're allergic to wheat and you eat wheat, that's going to cause inflammation. So yes, there is that kernel of truth, but that's only true for people with a soy allergy. And if you actually look at the clinical studies, again, there's one clinical study that shows that soy decreases inflammation, another clinical study that shows that soy decreases 
IL-6, which is a marker of inflammation, but it doesn't decrease other markers of inflammation. And there's a third study that says that soy has no effect on inflammation. But again, there's not a single published clinical study suggesting that soy actually increases inflammation in the general population. So, you know, if, I sum, if we sum it all up, I could go on and on because there are literally dozens of claims, but you've probably heard enough. I think you get the point. With, so with respect to all of those anti-soy websites and blogs, really the emperor has no clothes. Uh, there is no truth to most of those things that they're talking about. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not one of these people that claims that soy is a miracle food. I'm not going to be like this guy that just says, give me a martini with a soybean in it and tell you that's going to make you, that's going to make you healthy. Uh, soy is a very healthy protein source. It's the most complete uh, vegetable protein that we can eat, and it does have some potential health benefits. And more importantly, there's no good reason to avoid it. You know, when you actually look at the science, when you actually look at the published clinical studies, and you ignore all these urban myths. Thank you for joining me. I hope this was helpful.